we can't save the cutest animal in the world, what will happen? What's up YouTube? Today's knowledge video is a guide to working out if a koala is healthy or not. You'll see lots more healthy koalas here, but we will do a comparison. There is a bonus image of Bullet at the end of the video to enjoy. Let me know what you think of it. Koala Gardens is a wildlife sanctuary on private land. Subscribing helps me bring koalas to you and liking this video helps me bring them to the whole world. I'm lucky enough to live in the koala's backyard with a wild and free colony on the far north coast of New South Wales in Australia. Check out my Patreon options and come over and chat on my public Discord server. You'll find links for these and lots more in the description below. I'm Katrina and I'm passionate about saving koalas. In today's video, we're going to look over parts of the koala and what we're looking for to indicate a koala's really healthy. You can read about koala's health online, but I think it really helps to have a good look at koalas while we talk about the issues. By the end of this video, Hopefully, you'll be able to look at a koala and have a really good idea if the koala is healthy or not. If you live in Australia, please make sure you know who your local koala rescue group is and put their phone number into your phone. That way, you know you can call them if you ever see a koala you're concerned about. We're going to start by looking at the koala face. You can often tell a lot about the general health of the koala if it wakes up and looks directly at you. And of course, that can be half the battle to begin with. There are some things that are a clear sign of health that are much the same in general terms for koalas as other animals and even people. Firstly, the general demeanor. The koala should look alert, aware and be clean with fur in good condition. To really know that, we need to look at lots of koalas. And I know that all of you will be very happy to look at lots of koalas. When a koala wakes up and looks at you, we really expect to see that brightness of expression. One of the big things about expression, of course, is the eyes. When it comes to health, koala eyes are of particular importance. You've heard the expression, bright eyed and bushy tail. Well, koalas don't have tails that can be bushy, but the principle really is valid as the main disease that affects northern koalas will show signs in their eyes and tails, well, really, their bottoms. So no matter if a koala is male, female, young or old, we expect them to have bright, clear eyes that are clean and dry. A koala waking up may look sleepy, but once awake, we should see eyes like the ones that you're seeing here on koalas that we know from koala gardens. Chlamydia is a nasty disease and is responsible for around half the rescues here in the Northern Rivers area. The bacteria can infect the eyes of the koala and starts with mild irritation that can progress to complete blindness if not treated. Koalas with ocular chlamydia we will notice that their eyes become red, inflamed, the tissues swell and actual pus begins to discharge from the eyes. You can see Greta here has a watery discharge from the eyes. So she did not have chlamydia. It ended up that she had a blocked tear duct and she is 15 years old and raising a joey in this video. Now we'll examine the other end as this is also a huge indicator of koala health for the northern koalas in particular. Chlamydia can affect the eyes but also the urogenital system. So you'll find koala spotters spend so much time out there trying to get a view and photos of those gorgeous koala tushies who are actually doing health checks. It's likely that strains of chlamydia have existed for a very long time in the koala population. However, in the early 1800s, Europeans brought agricultural stock such as sheep, cattle, pigs into Australia 
and cleared native koala forest to farm them. Records from this time begin to report koalas that are curled up at the base of the trees with diseased eyes and looking very sick. Research has shown that some of the current strains of chlamydia are very similar to those found in those cattle, sheep and pigs. So it's widely accepted that these strains of chlamydia jumped from the agricultural animals to the koalas. Now these strains are more virulent and expose the koalas to diseases that have a major impact on the wild koala populations and have had for more than 200 years now. I find it interesting that you can even compare this to the exposure of our indigenous people to the European diseases such as influenza and the disastrous results that have impacted them for so long. We expect to see a healthy koala bottom showing as a clean, white, dry bottom. However, it's really important to note that quite often koalas will be perfectly healthy and have a slight yellowy brown staining to the fur on the bottom, but the fur is dry. And that's the really important thing about it because quite a lot of tree barks can ooze some color stain from them, particularly when the weather has been very wet. And this is one of the reasons it can be important to observe a koala for a period of time when it is only showing what might be very mild symptoms because it can be an influence of a lot of things. And that dryness is what's so important. So on Bullet here, we can see not completely white there underneath his bottom. But I've been following Bullet for years and I have never seen his bottom wet. He tested negative for chlamydia when he was in hospital after the dog bite in 2018. So again, we can see a very slight coloration here on this bottom, but that is a very healthy koala bottom. In the early stages of infection, the bladder begins to become inflamed and it thickens, and this causes the urine to dribble out much of the time. The urine stains their bottom and it's constantly wet. The more the disease progresses up through the system into the kidneys, into the uterus, the bottom will become wetter and wetter and often it will also be stained with faeces and become quite black. This is advanced disease progression and treatment becomes less and less effective. The important thing also to remember with koala disease is that the most important contributing factor is loss of habitat. The more good, clean habitat with lots of food koalas have, the higher their chance of resisting and coping with disease. In the next knowledge video on koala health, we're going to look at other diseases that are affecting koalas and some of the behavioural things that might indicate a sick koala. Koalas living high in the top of large trees are much more likely to be healthy. And guess what? You have made it through to the end of yet another video. So, would you write in the comments below, let's keep koalas healthy. Supporting Koala Gardens on Patreon and joining the free Discord server are another couple of great ways you can help do that. I'm so thrilled that after one week, I'm already a third of the way to my first Patreon goal. And now, here's your bonus. I have done some wonderful work on a beautiful photo of Bullet. This is one of my favorite Bullet photos, in fact. I'd love to know what you think of the result. Let me know in the comments below and stay tuned for lots more fantastic koala video coming your way. Thanks for visiting Koala Gardens. Did you hit the like button? Now before you go, there's lots more great video to see and make sure you've subscribed and hit that notification bell.